Oh, thank you. Um, it's uh, great to be here live. Um, I'm going to give you a very, very quick overview of the guidance document. I'm very excited because this morning I've got the best ever slide changing device, so hopefully everything goes really well. So there's just a few slides. I've got eight minutes in total to, to very quickly run through this, but of course you'll be able to look at it in more detail when you download the document. So the, the, the guidance is there to inspire the creation of healthier, nature-rich, nature climate-resilient, thriving places where people not only live and, uh, and go to school and college, but also work and play. It's written for local authority planners, but it's also going to be very useful for landscape architects, urban designers, uh, green space managers and, and frankly anyone wanting to bring more soil, water and vegetation and nature into their neighbourhood. So the, 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 the guide, the design guide will support local authorities to develop their own design codes for green infrastructure and it will complement the national design guide and the national model design code which we've already heard about uh, from Joanna. So. Um, it will also provide the evidence for the benefits and the functionality provided uh, by green infrastructure. So there are plenty of links in there and it's a very practical guide which will give the advice that you need and, and the, the leads if you need further detail. And as we've already heard, it, there's very strong links uh, with the green infrastructure framework, the principles and the standards. So, so you can cross-reference that and also, again, uh, it's important to note that, that this is, is complementing and mirroring the National Design Guide's 10 characteristics of well-designed well places. So there's very good integration there with, with the, these other initiatives. So um, the, the guidance uh, takes into account uh, biodiversity net gain, you've already heard about that, urban greening factor, you've heard about that from Peter, and the local nature recovery strategies. It's landscape-led with a focus on landscape character, uh, local distinctiveness, and of course we've had advice from, from all kinds of experts, geologists, heritage experts, uh, and others. So, so it's a very rounded approach. So one of the chapters is, is looking at the building, what we're calling the building blocks of green infrastructure networks from sustainable drainage, uh, green roofs, green walls and so on through to trees in hard landscapes and then some of the more better known features, allotments, orchards and, and parks, natural spaces, heritage features and blue spaces. So, so we look at each of those building blocks in turn looking at the issues and opportunities. Uh, for example, you've got sustainable drainage systems. And of course, we're very pleased now that DEFRA have just announced that they will be looking to implement Schedule 3 of the Flood and Water Management Act. So uh, this really will be something that, that all of us will be thinking about in the future. And then just very briefly, you know, we've got information on, for instance, here, features for species, um, bird boxes, nest roosting boxes, features for, for uh, invertebrates. Uh, another example, traffic-free routes. How do you go about integrating that into your green infrastructure network? Um, and also, it's important to reiterate that green infrastructure is there about multiple benefits. So there are links back to all the different functions and then how each, uh, each area uh, you know, can, can bring, bring about those benefits. It does vary from area to area. Um, good, good example of that, urban cooling. You already heard, heard about that from Tony. And so for each of these, there's a summary, there's some excellent diagrams, and it will, again, as I say, link you to the evidence of how, you know, in this case, how you're getting evaporative cooling and shade in heat waves from green infrastructure. Uh, On to the area types. These really uh, mirror what, uh, what is provided by the National Model Design Code. So we're going from the center of cities through to the rural areas and then there are one or two uh, specialist land use 
uses which are looked at as well. So for instance, the high streets are here. Uh, we're gonna have greener high streets, more trees, sustainable drainage and so on. So there's lots of uh, ideas about that. The urban core where we're going mm -hmm. to see a lot more vegetation on buildings, for example. Um, and for each of these, there are links back to the standards so that you can see how those would be applied in each case. So that's a very useful feature of, of the guidance. And then we've, we've worked with people in uh, the Department of Education and, and others to look at particular land use types. So here, for instance, you've got a typical education campus. So there's, there's thoughts about how, how you go about greening those and maximizing uh, the benefits that you get from green infrastructure. So plenty to dig into there. And then uh, finally, there are case studies. Um, this, this particular example is Minster P Park in Sunderland. And for each case study, um, again, there are links back to um, the, uh, the standards so you can see how they were applied or if they were applied. And the case studies are on the website, and I understand that they will grow in number. So that will be a terrific resource and one that you'll probably want to go back to.